There's a lot of stuff out there. Before you retweet, share, oh, we got another thumbs down, good, or actually believe this stuff, do some just basic fact checking. Just A, give it the smell test. Does this make any sense? Does this make any sense? And then, you know, go out there and, and do some research. If you care about these topics, then do some research. Go figure out, is this real? And, and figure out who's the source. What do I know about these people? Where does this come from? Just, you know, we talked about reason on one of the shows. Reason is a, as a, as, as a, uh, as a primary virtue, uh, as a primary value, and rationality is a primary virtue. Well, use it, for God's sake. Think. Think means get facts. Think means do research. Think doesn't mean, oh, yeah, sure, I like Trump and could be the Trump law, so there must be conspiracy. So I believe that guy and that guy and every tweet that I get that reaffirms my bias because I like Trump. Use your mind. Actually do some research. Actually do some work. If you don't want to do the work, that's fine. Fine, I completely understand you. But then don't retweet. Don't share. Don't take it as fact. Don't believe in it. And this relates to the virtue of honesty. You have to be honest, which means you have to be able to identify the... Uh, identify, I can't talk. Identify the facts. Having a hunch is not enough. Having a bias is not enough. Because Hannity said it. I think that's called independence, another virtue. Think for yourself. Think for yourself. You know, Alex Jones is not a source. Friends of Alex Jones, reporters of Alex Jones, associates of Alex Jones are not sources. Not legitimately, not without other evidence. And then ask yourself, is anybody providing proof of any of their claims? Do they actually say, here, look, go do this? Right. Ed Kelly says, I find it interesting that when Yuan talked about voter fraud, he mentions Trump, but Trump's people doesn't mention Biden and the left because Biden and the left are not claiming fraud this election. And they didn't make a, that big of a deal of it in 2016 when Trump won by a small margin. So why would I mention Biden when I'm talking about fraud in this election, when the only people talking about fraud in this election, the only people complaining, the only people putting together conspiracy theories about fraud is of uh, Trump. Why would I mention Biden? It's just, it's just bizarre to me why you guys think the way you think. I just, I, I, I just don't get it. I just don't get it. I need to be balanced about Conspiracies regarding voter fraud when only the right is presenting them? Did they do it? Again, evidence, proof. Every, every, in front of every court in America that's seen this has thrown it out. And you'll see in the coming days that they'll all throw it out. The only one case has a potential to reach the Supreme Court, and, and the Supreme Court might vote in favor of it, and it has no relevance to winning the election. It's the Philadelphia case, but there are not enough votes there to change the outcome. There's no proof of fraud. There's no evidence of fraud. Every single allegation of fraud so far, there's a counter to it. Now, I'm not saying no fraud happened, but to say it did happen requires real evidence, requires evidence you can present in a court of law. And every time they present in a court of law, the court has thrown them out. Now remember, Donald Trump has appointed more judges to federal courts than, than maybe any president, at least in, in recent times. So a lot of these judges are probably Republican appointees, and they're throwing this out because there's no there there. Now again, I wouldn't be surprised if there was fraud. I wouldn't be surprised if it was fought on both sides. 
yeah, I mean, I think the PA case will probably be won, won by Trump, but the PA case is too insignificant to matter. Even Trump people admit that. If they just have that case, first of all, uh, Biden won even without Pennsylvania. So even if they reverse Pennsylvania, it won't change anything. But even if they win that case, the number of votes that fall under that case are not enough to change this election. So yes, there is some question about a decision the Pennsylvania Supreme Court made before the election about w what votes could be counted or not. It affects very little votes, very small number of votes. They cannot change the election, so who cares? And if the Supreme Court overturns it for the sake of future precedent, fine, but it's not gonna change this election. because there's no systemic fraud, there's no widespread fraud. There's some fraud here and there, and it's probably committed by both parties. The same fraud that happens in every election. I'm, I'm the last one to say there's no fraud in elections. There probably is. But the kind of fraud that would reverse the kind of vote count that Biden has over Trump, there is none of that fraud. Or, or at least there's zero evidence that there's that kind of fraud. And if you listen to all these conspiracy theories about the computer company, Dominion Systems, I mean, it's mind-boggling. The, the, supposedly there's a supercomputer, I think it's in Germany, that, uh, that uh, Obama used to win the 2012 election. And the supercomputer hacks into the election system in, in transmission points, and it flips the votes. Now, if you do just a little bit of research online, you will discover that all of that is a bunch of BS. And the people promoting it are, are just conspiracy theory nobodies. But it's all over the place. It's everywhere because people don't use even basic rules of epistemology, like check your sources, look for confirming facts, figure out how the system of voting works so that would an interference in the middle actually be able to switch votes? It turns you can't. Because, you know, they also, before it's transmitted from the county to, to the state, there's a, there's a paper printout that's made that's distributed widely. So if there was a discrepancy between the two, you'd find it out easily. There is no change the vote to Trump in Dominion systems. And then the conspiracies about who owns Dominions, uh, it's, uh, it's Nancy Pelosi's husband. No, he doesn't. Oh, no, Nancy Pelosi's husband owns the company that, that writes the software for Dominion. Not anymore, but used to. But they don't write the software for Dominion. They write other kind of software. It's Avid. They write uh, software for animation and stuff like that. I mean, every time you actually go look at the facts behind one of these conspiracies, you end up in reality, which is, no, there's nothing. There's no there, there. So please, not for my sake, not for America's sake, not for the future's sake, for your sake. If you have any respect for your mind, don't just accept these things. Don't just accept these things. Challenge yourself to read the opposition. Challenge yourself to fact check. And, and luckily online, there's a bunch of fact checkers. And, and you might not believe one, you might not believe two, but at least take that into account, what they write, and you can check for yourself. Usually, with the Google and, and the internet today, you can find a lot of information, a lot of information. All the materials are retained. And remember, too, Georgia, for example. Georgia's a state run by Republicans. I mean, at every level, they're Republicans. The governor's a Republican, the, 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 the secretary of state's a Republican, the attorney general's a Republican. Most of the precincts are run by Republicans. The idea that Georgia pulled one over on Republicans is just, it's just a joke. Yeah, Atlanta's Democratic, but you think the Republicans don't have reach into Atlanta when they control the state? Wisconsin Republicans are not weak. They elected many Republicans to higher office over the years. Do you really think that the Democrats just steamrolled Republicans in Wisconsin? Really? Think, people. Think. You, you got a mind. It's there for a reason. Don't just use it when you do science. Use it, too, when you... You would never accept scientific evidence on this basis. You would throw it out. You'd never be published in scientific journals. 
that somehow when it comes to politics, we accept anything if it confirms our tribe's bias. All right. Let's see. I, I mean, Georgia was really close. Georgia was 0.3% of the vote, so they're doing a recount, which is not because of this election, because that's what they do, and the vote is closer to 0.5%. And it's unlikely that the result gets shifted, but it's just a few thousand votes, so it's, you know, mistakes, human error could result in something like that. But it's unbelievable that you know, in Pennsylvania, where, there, where it's tens of thousands of votes, Wisconsin, Michigan, where it's a significant number of votes, uh, Arizona, where, where really has no chance. Um, and, and by the way, he'd have to overturn a few of those states. One would not be enough. If Georgia flips, that's not enough. Right? If he has Nevada, Arizona, Wisconsin, and Michigan, that's enough. Right? He'd have 200, Biden would have 270. So it's just... I, I mean, th this is just stalling tactics, and, and in a future show, I'll speculate as to why I think Trump is doing this, uh, you know, and you'll hate me even more. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think, meaning any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brutes. All right, before we go on, reminder. Please like the show. We, we've got 163 live listeners right now. Uh, 30 likes. That should be at least 100. I figure at least 100 of you actually like the show. Maybe there are like 60 of the Matthews out there who hate it. But, but at least the people who are liking it, you know, I want to see, see a thumbs up. There you go. Start liking it. I want to see that go to 100. It, all it takes is a click of a, a, click of a, a thing, whether you're looking at this. Uh, and, and, you know, the likes matter. It, it's not an issue of my ego. It's an issue of the algorithm. The more you like something, the more the algorithm likes it. So, you know, and if you don't like the show, give it a thumbs down. Let's see your actual views being reflected in the likes. But uh, if you like it, don't just sit there. Help get the show promoted. Of course, you should also share. And uh, you can support the show at youronbookshow.com slash support or on Patreon or Subscribestar or Locals uh, and, uh, and show your support for, all, for, for, for the work, for the value hopefully you're receiving from this. And, uh, and of course, don't forget, if you're not a subscriber, even if, you, even if you just come here to troll or even if you're here like Matthew to defend Marx, uh, then uh, you should subscribe because that way you'll know when to show up. You'll know what shows are on, when they're on. You'll get notified, right? So, um, yes, like, share, subscribe, support. Like, share, subscribe, support. There you go. Easy. Do one or all of those, please. <laughs>